This podcast features adult content not suitable for listeners under the age of 18. You have been warned. Previously on Back to the Story. So reaching out in a similar manner, but instead of poison or disease, looking for signs of magic. Yeah, something does being in her stomach. She ever answered any of your questions, your prayers? I believe she speaks to me in strange dreams. You see the man dressed in black who looks up at you. Is there something that I could help you with? The reflection off this turtle isn't as bright, and the shell is heavily wounded and is slowly falling behind. I jump in the water. We'll find out. All right, so as we jump back, Ezekiel has just div- uh, dove off the side of the ship, healing a wounded turtle, a pearl back, as it suddenly dives to try to get away. Vesper and Amson, you're quick enough to notice this and try to heal the creature more, and are able to do so before it disappears from sight. Um, deep below. Everyone give me... And actually, um, Ezekiel, as you're looking at these wounds and trying to heal them, Make a medicine check. Everything is very sad. Um, Seven. You see the wounds were at one time severe, and maybe there's a trickle of blood coming out. It's hard to notice with how quick it dove and the light of the healing, how recent those wounds were. But they did look severe. All right. I'll just float there for a second, letting it go, and then realize I have to catch a boat and start swimming back. Okay. And the boat is more or less come to a stop to uh, see the turtles and definitely as one of their passengers has jumped aboard. As you turn around, Ezekiel, make a perception check for me. Um, You see something out of the corner of your eyes. You begin to back towards the boat. Something below the um, boat begins to move. Um, Not quite shimmer, but you see a ripple of something appear. Um, at this point, everyone go ahead and roll initiative for me. 21. Oh. Uh, good thing I can fly, right, guys? <laughs> you just in the middle of the water stranded. Was any of those videos of a shark catching a seagull? Yeah, I know. I can't even turn into swimming creatures yet. This was a poorly planned. All right. So... Amson, you're technically up first, but you just see Ezekiel beginning to swim back towards the boat. Ellery, then Ball. And then we see Ezekiel as your eyes begin to widen, as the rest of you notice this, as something shimmering begins to move towards the surface. And you see this massive creature of scales and a long snout that begins to poke its head up of the water, quickly whipping its massive tail behind it speeding towards you. Um, You see this thing resembles something like an alligator. A massive, but with a ridge of um, a dorsal fin almost along the top of it running down its spine as it comes towards you. It quickly (laughs) swims in your direction and is going to make a bite towards you. Uh, That is a 20, a dirty 20 dead. Uh, Yeah, that'll hit. 24 piercing damage as it <laughs> grabs you and begins to pull you under the water and suddenly there's a <laughs> so it actually can't do that as it tries to chomp down upon you. You're currently grappled and restrained. 17 to hit. Uh, that just hits. Another 26 piercing damage as I'm unconscious. it chomps down and the rest of you see uh, this massive sea alligator chomping down on Ezekiel um, and beginning to pull him underwater as he is under unconscious. That will bring us up to Vesper, currently so surprise. You see a elf, the golden elf that um, was patrolling, sees this, begins to uh, move in that direction, but is a still surprised. Calvin, you're surprised. Um, Ezekiel, make a death saving throw. Fail. Two. All right, so the blood is immediately pooling out as this navy ocean is quickly becoming red on this side. Back at the top, that will bring us up to Amson. 
Okay, cool. Um, so how far away is Ezekiel? He's thirty-five feet out and maybe ten feet down as the this saurus, the sea gator, began to pull him under water. Okay. So for my bonus action, I'm going to second level healing word Ezekiel. Uh, that's a great six, but at least he's not dying. Ezekiel, or you breathe in and immediately cough out the water as you're underwater. There are bubbles everywhere and severe pain as the uh, my massive jaw is wrapped around your torso and arms, but you're alive. And for my action, I'm going to rip off a patch from my robe of use of useful items. And toss a 50-foot rope off of the boat, and I'll hold on to the other end. Actually, I'm right there next to the, um, I don't remember what it's called, but the netting that goes up the mast uh, that connects to the side of the ship, uh, where that netting um, meets the railing of the boat, I'm going to start tying the rope um, against okay. the side of the ship there. Sure. So you take your action to rip off the... The patch as 50 foot of root just begins to unravel around this patch um, as if the patch is made of very tightly cold rope that expands into a tall line. Um, it takes your action to pull the object um, or pull the patch so you can't quite tie it, but you're beginning to do so. And that will bring us up to Ellery. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is running as so far as I can. you just come to the top of the deck from the stairs. Right. Uh, so I'm running towards the edge. I'm a little bit back from the edge. Can I see well enough to hit the creature with a spell from here? Let's see. From that angle, it's pretty large. You can just catch it. Because of your sniper ability, you would be able to. Okay. So in that case, I am going to cast... And I'll say as you're beginning to cast a spell... Everyone can currently see it, but it is about 10 feet under the water. The water isn't pitch black swamp water, but if it starts getting another 10 or so feet below, it's going to start to be hard to see it. And how far okay. above the water are we on the top of the ship? Like uh, are... You are maybe 15 feet up. Okay. Okay, so I am going to uh, cast Chaos Bolt. Okay, you conjure up this energy that's hard for you to control. Using the mirror as you reflect the light out from it, it turns a particular color. That is 23 to hit. Oh yeah, that will hit. So that is 18 points of, let's go with psychic damage. Okay. So as the lights rapidly transform as you're holding this chaotic energy that you can barely control, you release... And suddenly there's just a bright light that expands from the um, the mirror, your arcane focus. Um, and instead of something shooting out, you just hear suddenly this <sighs> leaf the water um, as you hear a growl from this creature beneath the waves. That will bring us up to Ball. Okay. Um, so I want to, uh, I guess, dive into the water here. Um, you could essentially jump on top of it or next to it. Your choice. I think I want to jump on top of it, and I'd like to do some kind of action here where I basically kind of, like, dig my sword into it and try to grapple it in that way. You know, like, you know, stick the sword into it and then hold on to the sword, which is holding on to it. Sure. Okay. Make a athletics check as you begin to leap off the side to try to get above it. You the, the boat actually rocks from your weight pushing off of it. Let um, me dive into the air. I'm beginning to fall down. He's bringing your blade down. Make an attack roll. Make another athletics check. Okay. Uh, 22. Yeah, so as you dive into the water, your blade hits into the sum of the armor, but it's able to, you're able to get deep enough and to grab upon its shoulder almost. Uh, this massively scaled sea saltwater crocodile um, grabbing onto it, and you currently have it grappled. And you see in its jaws through the murky water, with bubbles and chaos of the waves, and you see Ezekiel's form um, in the jaws of the creature. But you have it grappled. Okay, uh, so Ezekiel is in the jaws of the creature, so I'm going to, my bonus action, try to compel it to attack me, so I'm going to cast Compelled Duel. It is a wisdom saving throw. And it rolled a natural two. 
So it does, it fails. All right. So um, basically, unless someone else does something to it, then it's compelled to attack me. So I have disadvantage on attack rolls against other creatures, but it'll be broken if you know someone tries to do something to it. Okay, and a good thing. So as you dive in, grabbing onto it and roaring under the water, the creature is up next, and instead of chomping down on the restrained Ezekiel, releases him and turns to go for you, Ball. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Uh, no, it, I'll say it doesn't hit. So maybe with a little bit of divine intervention, it tries to strike me, but my armor seems, I guess, thicker or more durable than you'd expect. Okay. Almost as if there is another presence there preventing the jaws from chomping through the chain and leather um, at the corners. It is going to make another attack. That one is a 23 to hit. Yeah, that'll just hit then. The first one is not able to pierce through as there's a bit of uh, light preventing it from doing so. It chomps down harder the second time and is able to land a hit at that time, dealing 19 piercing damage. And you're currently grappled and restrained. So you both you have a hold of it and it has a hold of you. And that will bring us up to Vesper. Okay. With my bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. Next so. Thingy. And no, it's not going to not gonna hit. But then with my action, I'm going to use a cantrip and toll the dead on it. So it needs to make a wisdom save. Um, and that is eight. No. That will not do it. That's 2d12 then. Not awesome. Uh, that's 12 necrotic damage. Okay. Okay, so as you uh, conjure up the bow, um, it tries to strike through the water, but there are three entities splashing about there. Um, but you do find those wounds that have been delivered and begin to try to uh, open those up um, using or channeling the divine energy and the mastery of her life. And that will, unless there's something else for you, that will bring us up to the next individual. And Calvin, you're on deck. So as uh, this is happening, you see an elf, the one that holds the glaive, jump up onto the railing, ch -ch -ch, sprint along it, and leap off into the water, <sighs> um, disappearing beneath the waves. But is not able to do anything else. That will bring us up to Calvin. Cool. I would like to cast Shield of Faith on Paul, as he is currently... Counterspell. <laughs> Casting this uh, shield of faith, uh, faith, light begins to surround Ball, almost like sunlight, uh, creating a shield around him. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get in the water. Hey, it looks like I'm going to jump in the water, I guess, and do what I can. Hooray! Okay. For sinking like a rock. Make an athletics check as you back up, and then. Choo -choo. Begin to jump into. It is a fourteen. All right, so you jump, <laughs> splashing into the water um, next to the creature, and that will bring us up to Ezekiel. So you are floating underwater, disoriented, and have just been released with a joust. And there's just chaos around you. It's hard to tell which way's up. Okay, I'm gonna orient myself, and I'm. Can I reach the surface of the water without? Well. I guess I don't know his reach. So while I'm still underwater, I will bonus action to turn into a dire wolf. And then I'm I, I'm just going to swim over so I'm next to Ball and attack as a dire wolf. We'll try that. Okay. Um, so transforming into a dire wolf, which I believe they are large. Um, yes. And you are about 10 feet below the surface. But you transform... <laughs> If I'm next to Ball because of pack tactics, I have advantage. Okay. And uh, because you don't have a swimming s speed, you're at disadvantage, I believe. So it's just a straight roll. Straight roll, yeah. 17? 17, I believe. Let me double check. We'll hit, yes. All right. So I'll do 14 piercing damage. He has to make a strength save, and I'm going to pop a second level smite into that. Another 15 radiant. 
And that is a 16 on the strength save. All right. So I don't know what knocking him prone does underwater anyway, but he takes a lot of damage. Okay. Uh, So you suddenly into this massive form. Is it a a dire wolf with black fur or brown or what does it look like? Uh, I think gray for the dire wolf, um, but still kind of not glowing, but the green eyes are still there. Okay. And struggling to swim, but you still with ball distracting it, grabbing onto each other almost. The dire wolf strikes up, finding and pressing through the thick um, outer hide and armor of this uh, natural creature. Driving the teeth in, um, and you feel almost a divine energy release from those things. Punishing this creature who is starting to take some wear and tear here. That's my turn. And that will bring us up hey, to boss. Uh, Hey, boss. Hey, Mr. DM. Um, did the athletics check count as a uh, standard action for me? No, that was just to get there. Okay, because the Shield of Faith was a bonus action. Okay, that's right. Go ahead and make your easier action then. Okay, well, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the pokey mechanic that I've developed over the years. It's a fifteen. Okay, and you actually they have a straight roll because of the weapon you're using, and that will. You said you rolled a fifteen. Yes, sir. You hit just barely as you hit the outer shell and push through. His blood begins to pour out, dealing. I rolled an 11 plus 4 is 15 piercing. Nice. Is that including the smite? That's in- Yeah, that's including the smite. Okay, and so suddenly the spear whoosh, turns into, a, for a brief second, a ray of sunshine as it whoosh, strikes into the creature. You can see it's taking hits from all directions now and is beginning to thrash violently. That will bring us up to Hampson. Okay, so I'm going to try to tie this rope off. Okay. You can do that. It's it's not. You don't need to make a check on that. You can tie it secur- securely, taking a whole action to do so. Okay, and then um, I'm going to, because I always have my loot with me. I'm going to whip up my loot, and as a bonus action, I'm going to inspire. Let's go with Ezekiel by playing some sick riffs that kind of go like, da 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 da. Yeah. Synchronize with the waves as they lap against the side of the ship for your percussion. You lay out those sick riffs. Uh, and that'll be my turn. And that'll bring us to Ellery. First things first, I move the rest of the way over to the side. Seeing especially Ball and Calvin in the water, I am filled with incoherent rage and I take the stance that I normally would as if I were about to hurl a firebolt, but instead I say a word in Infernal, and two beams of energy come out of my hand towards the creature as I cast Eldritch Blast. Oh, hell yes. So with your smell, spell sniper... It's you're still able to see it and shoot down. Okay, that is fifteen. Just it. Okay, fifteen for the first one, and then sixteen for the sec. No, seventeen for the second. They both hit. Okay. Yes, sir. Blast. And that is ten. And this spell, I don't think you've cast it before. What does it look like? So it, it's uh, two beams of energy. They are both blue, like most of my magic is, but they're kind of a darker blue than the sort of whitish blue that most of mine is. Okay. So this dark, swirling energy is just released, <laughs> slamming into the top. Sending water and salts flying everywhere. And is that your turn? That is my turn. That'll bring us up to Ball, who's underwater and grappled and restrained. All right. So while I'm trying to free myself uh, from the grip of this sea thing, um, I am going to... I don't know how water or how using fire spells works under underwater, but we're just going to go with it. I am going to, as I 
bonus action burst into flames, I am going to try to yell underwater and runic weapon or into its mouth. Okay. Sure. So as you lower the flames erupt towards it. And I don't know either, but I'll pro we'll say advantage on saves for that. I don't think I think resistance is too much. Okay, sure. Um so it is a DC thirteen deck save. Um, natural 15. Let's see if this deck sucks. It's actually not bad. So, uh, it saves actually. So it takes half of that damage because the flames immediately bring water to a boil, but there's still a few flames that lick into the side of it. So it'd be half of four. And then let me just remember what my little mantle thing does. Whenever I roll fire damage on my turn. So it also gets, so it's going to be eight damage total. So in half is four. Okay. The breath. So you push those flames through, um, channeling almost a divine fury, fury of flame. And you can angle it in such a way as you're not going to hit anybody else. Can I angle yeah, it I'd like to think that I'm ups. in its mouth right now. Is that how I understand it? And then so I'm basically just kind of like breathing it into the inside of this body. Okay, so you do so as the flames kind of burn the inside of the mouth. So it'll be, if it hits me with a melee attack, or if it touches me, then it takes fire damage equal to my charisma modifier. Um, so it, it'll go ahead and dig it now. Okay, which would it be is three. Um, so you ball is just on the on flame in the water, water boiling around him, and the creature having you in its mouth is going to begin to turn and do bear roll and go into a death roll. I need ball to make a strength saving throw. Okay, so it's an eleven. Okay. So in that case, you take, all right. I'm hearing a lot of dice roll. You take 27 points of bludgeoning damage as it just goes into a death roll. All of you can see it around just whipping into a barrel after barrel, whipping um, ball around. Okay, so as that happens, I will go unconscious. Okay. So Ball, um, suddenly as it, the barrel stops, Ball is limp in the maw of the creature. And that will bring us up to Vesper. I immediately, oh shit. Fuck it, I'm going to jump in the water. Okay, uh, make an athletics check. It's not going to go well. That's a six. <laughs> okay, so you tumble over backwards, falling into the water. Um, um, you get there. But it uses some of your movement, so half of your movement is gone, but you're still there. Fine, I want to get close enough to grab ball uh, and cast Cure Wounds. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use my last second level slot. Smoke pulling from your fingertips as the light spreads from your hands. It's spreading through ball's wound. Uh, That's 12 points of healing to ball. And then bonus action to attack with the spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, 16. 16 what? Great. Garbage. That's, uh, that's, uh, six damage with that. Okay. Is a spiritual weapon finds its mark and ball is conscious, but still in the maw of the creature. That's all I can do. That's all, all right. I'm going to do. Ball still alight with flames. That will bring us up to the elf that has just jumped in. And you notice he can swim actually very well. Swimming in with his glaive. And he is going to swim to it and strike at it twice with his glaive. That would... Uh, that would not. The first one does hit. As the elf is beginning to strike into it slices through the armor with its uh, first strike. And that will bring us to Calvin. Okay, I'm going to cure wounds at first level to offer a little bit of extra. That's not bad. Uh, what is my spell casting ability? No, I don't know things. I'm going to figure it out, guys. Hold on. It's your so that's 10. Charisma modifier. No, I... I just didn't know. You know what, guys? I figured it out without you harassing me. Uh, it's 10. 10. Uh, 10. Have I said 10 yet? It's 10. 
<laughs> and then he can Calvin cast ten on ball. Yep. <laughs> I'm and actually then, this into ten. Uh, and then I'm going to. Uh, 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 I don't. I was going to do something else, but I don't know what it was. So we're just going to attack it. Okay. We can attack it as you strike. Is the natural water. Natural seventeen plus six yeah, or right, eight? I don't remember. Yeah, for so. for sure. And it's starting to look pretty wounded now. That was terrible. I needed something to prevent that. That's six piercing. Okay. You strike through the armor once more. Is that your turn, Calvin? Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable where I am, so I'm not going to move. Okay, that'll bring us up to Ezekiel in direwolf form. All you see, right. Ball is conscious again um, after being healed by Vesper than Calvin, but is still in the maw of the creature. All right, well, I'm going to try and bite the thing again. Straight roll. Yeah, that is. Don't need that inspiration, but thank you. I'll go ahead and drop another smite uh, at second level, so that's seven piercing, and then I just have to do the radiant. And 13 radiant. How do you want to do this? So as it's got its mouth around the ball, I just want to, like, swim down under as a dire wolf and, like, get its throat and just kind of tear it out in an explosion of light. All right, and so as you do so, um, as the dire wolf's jowls open wide, almost a flood of light spreads. As those green eyes begin to glow brighter, you <laughs> into its throat, um, and the wounds are torn out of the throat. Um, as the body thrashes about um, for a few moments before suddenly um, releasing ball from its grasp. And Ezekiel, you can feel in dire wolf form, you snapping through the outer hide of the creature, the bone cartilage sinew as you just crushed its throat and part of its jaw as it slowly comes still and until it's just the waves uh, lapping you against the sides of the ship. Is everyone all right? I'm just going to float over as a big old wet dog and lick the side of your face. Oh, okay. That's um, gross. Yeah, no thank you. We should all probably get back on the ship. Can I still keep my hand on this giant corpse and, like, keep it above water, or does it just float up to the top anyway? No, it seems like it floats. Okay. So I think I'll swim to the sh like to the surface and kind of drag it towards the boat. Okay. So, yeah, you can do so. As everyone is coming back aboard, I don't say anything, but I'm just shaking. Uh, I'm going to get up onto the rigging, as it is called, uh, and just yell down, Is everyone all right down there? I'll turn back into Ezekiel uh, and start bleeding again. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Uh, thank you all. Sorry about that. Got a little reckless with the turtle. Get the above deck, the elf in the water uh, says. Before the tiger sharks come. There's a rope here if you need it. And you see Thanks. the elf kind of swims over and begins climbing. Because the boat is made out of like woven uh, mangrove roots, you can kind of climb it. It's not super easy, but it's doable. The rope is definitely makes it a lot easier, though. I'm going to scramble up as quickly as I can. <laughs> okay. You scramble yeah. up as the elf kind of climbs up. The old fashioned way, so to help pull everyone else up. And when Ezekiel comes up, I'm going to grab his arm and uh, cast cure wounds on him. Okay. First level, that's all I have. Ooh, not bad. Um, which is a 15, 15 points of healing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to drag this thing onto the deck? And am I stopped if I try to do that? Um, depends if you try to do it. It's it's a big creature. It's probably it's definitely heavy. You are pretty strong though. You could try. Um, maybe instead I'll look to the party as I'm getting out of the water and say, uh, "Do we want to bring this on deck?" We could probably harvest it. What for, for? good things? Oh, yeah, Bo. As you asked that, the elf that jumped in the water with you, the one with the glaive, turns and says, "Oh." At the same time that another golden elf, a female, is behind him, on my shoulder said, Yes. She looks excited about it. I don't know what to do. What I mean, are you doing? Do it quick. And you see the elf is kind of looking out to the waters, looking out for any other creatures. 
Okay, I'll try to. I'll start to try to drag it onto the boat. Maybe tie the rope around it, and we can try and haul it up. I have another rope. We could kind of pull it to with the two of them. Wrap one around the tail and one around the throat. Yeah, I'll get my fancy good rope out and try to help with the tying there. Okay. Once you're able to get the the rope around, whoever's pulling two people, um, give me strength checks. We'll say at advantage as others help, and even some of the gold mills will help pull as well. So two people roll strength checks at advantage. So I'll do one of them. You want me to do one? Calvin, yeah. What's that check for you, Calvin? 16. Okay. Um, You'll begin to pull it up, and as soon as you kind of get it out of the water, the weight becomes immense. And you kind of get stuck at the top of the water for a few minutes, but eventually drop it back into the water and then begin to pull again. And each time you hit getting it above the water um, to where the buoyancy isn't helping with the weight anymore, the weight becomes substantial. Um, This thing must weigh at least two tons. Eventually, between both of you and between Golden Elves and a few of you other members of your party, you eventually slowly begin to get it up to the side. Um, and slowly begin to pull it over. It takes a good hour to do so. But you're able um, to finally get it over and then flop it <laughs> onto the deck. As they're getting started on this, I kind of collect myself, and then I look around for Orizana since I had just dragged her up to the deck. Uh, she is not on deck. Okay. I'm going to go down and look for her below. She is in her spot on the bedroll, sitting. Watching. How does she seem? Uh, like you finally convinced her and then it turned out horrible and she's never trusting you again. Lovely. I go over to her and... She squints at you. I say... I'm, uh... I'm sorry about that. I didn't expect that was going to happen. Turtles. There were turtles, and apparently they were being chased. She huffs and kind of turns over to her side, looking at the wall away from you, turning her back to you. So, uh, I was hoping that I could show you something good. Can I ask you a question? She kind of turns her head slightly towards you. Is that a yes or a no? She turns away from you. I guess I'll ask later. Okay. As you uh, leave her and go back up deck, the rest of you have hauled this creature atop, finally drop it into the deck. Uh, There's a few cheers from some of the golden elves as you finally get it to it. And one um, golden elf... um, beautiful younger one with a completely shaved head and a vest barefoot pulls out a dagger and begins coming, moving towards the body. The carcass of this Saurus. I think Balls leaned up against the carcass, starting a short rest and recovering from okay. being a little wounded. All right. Uh, if you want to start a short rest, I can do, we can take a short rest and I can do my uh, dealer thing on you. Sure. And on Zeke, if you want to take a short rest. I yeah. will join everybody in the short rest by singing a song of rest. Okay, I made my check for both of you guys, so you each can take a full healing from one of your die. Uh, you all, both of you also get an extra two on healing. Thank you. And as you're uh, resting and taking your short rest, healing up, patching your wounds... This golden elf has begun to cut into the body of this gator, the saurus, and is cutting off pieces of meat and kind of throwing them to the side, tossing out the um, uh, the non-usable parts into the ocean. The ship has now begun, uh, picked up speed once again, is beginning to continue to move east. After I patch up the boys, I'm going to go over and kind of see if they're going to cut into the stomach. And see what comes out of that. And okay. swallowed anything good. Yeah, she gets to that part and begins to rake down, uh, releasing the organs. The smell is awful. Anyone who's resting nearby, so at least Vesper, maybe some others, make a constitution save for me. Nine. 
Also nine. Fourteen okay. for ball. I'm so a eight. I'm a good distance away, so. Okay. So below ten. So Ezekiel and Vesper, you both get the sudden urge to vomit. You don't actually vomit, but you do kind of oop, and kind of have to step away for a moment. Um, as she cuts in, the uh, the organs pile out onto the deck. Um, Vesper, Ezekiel, did you stay around to look, or are you moving away? No, I'll stick around. Yeah, I'll okay. pull my shirt up over my nose and stick okay. around. Sticking around, um, make another constitution save at disadvantage. Uh, that's a natural one. <laughs> Vesper, you vomit. You yeah. turn to the side and just vomit. I feel like I have done this before as an animal, but I did roll a three. <laughs> okay. Eleven would have maybe gotten you through, but Ezekiel, you also vomit. Um, it, there's something about the contents of it, but staying nearby, able to look, the stomach is large, and it looks like there's probably a few stomachs, uh, maybe two of them, massive, and there are things in there. Large hunks of animals, entire fish, chunks of metal or rock, maybe, um, as the guts are kind of sloshed to the side and are beginning to be tossed over the deck. Um, you see a few of the intestines were cut open, and you see shards of what looks like rock is covered in blood and gore and other fluids. This whitish or light-colored rock of some sort? I want to take a piece of that. Okay. Um, the other, the golden are kind of the whole time. <laughs> looking at you funny as you're just, yeah, vomiting and just vomit down your chin. But you do go over and you take a piece and you pull it up. It looks like the piece of the pearl back shell. I'm going to, I don't know, I'll hang on to it for now and clean it off later. Okay. Here, I'll help you with that. And I'll reach my hand out. And then I will stand up and begin to cast mending on this piece and try to uh, restore it to some of its former glory. Okay. Yeah, there's a few marks and chips. Um, this whole thing is just a piece of something greater. And also you can, like, a few of the cracks in this particular piece are mended back together. All right, so having, like, kind of cleaned it up a bit, I'll return that to the investor. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. And now I'll pocket it. <laughs> All right. And um, as you're kind of taking your short rest watching this, eventually they remove the organs and cut out chunks of the meat. The... The remainder of the head is removed. The bottom jaw looks like it was partially shattered from the dire wolf strike. And some are kind of fighting over various pieces of it, but it looks like they have a large uh, section of meat, uh, kind of a pile of meat from this massive creature. And we'll probably eat well tonight. I'm going to snag a few of those teeth. Sure. You can take plenty of them. They're pretty large teeth. They're rows of them, almost like a shark. I've got like five or so. Easy enough. I'd like to grab a few of those as well. Yeah. How many? Let's if it's, say... if it's like below 10, easy enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably sure. take easy. four. How large are the teeth? They are... Mm, trying to think of those. Uh, they're maybe two, three inches in length and maybe two, three inches um, in triangle. Something like that. Okay. But eventually, um, they kind of toss off the unusable bits, keep a few keepsakes, and there y'all will probably have Saurus steak later on tonight. Once they finish with it, I'm just going to do create water for a little rain to wash the blood off the deck. Okay. And the gore. Good. Yeah. It rains off the blood and gore. And what's left of the little pieces pours off the side of the ship and into the ocean. You do notice there are splashes of fish following the ship now from all the gore that's been slowly um, serving as fish bait, essentially. And you notice that one, the female golden elf who harvested the meat is now taking one of the larger pieces and is putting it on a very large hook and is beginning to set up some sort of fishing apparatus to hang off the back of the boat ship as it uh, flies east. <laughs> I think uh, Ball notices this. I'll 
it, 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 was it the, the female elf? Yeah, the female elf, the one that said yes, as the other one said no, to carrying it up onto the ship. I'll say uh, I wouldn't keep that beast too big. I don't want to fight something bigger than that. I'm sure you can handle it. And she smiles. I don't want she, to have to. Her smile kind of fades, but she continues to put on the large steak of Sar's meat onto the massive hook. I think, uh, how big is this? How big is this piece? It's maybe the size of a brick. Well, I think, uh, for now, I'll just kind of stink eye her a little bit. Okay. She kind of smiles wryly and backs away from you towards the edge of the ship. And uh, yeah, I keep note. I keep note of where this fishing stuff is going on. So yeah, she throws it off and she grabs a, a stool and just is watching this line out of the back of the ship as you're continuing east. But unless you'll stop me if you wanted to do something as a, the next couple of hours go by without any issue as night is beginning to approach. Um, I think during this time I would like to spend a bit of time trying to craft some actual lockpicks. Sure. Go for it. Um, so, uh, do I need to make a thieves tools check or? I believe so. Yeah. With okay. decks. Oh, that's good. That is a dirty 20. Okay. Yeah. You, you succeed. And I think the feed actually tells you how many you can make per hour or so. I think. Yeah. It's, um, equal to my level per day. Okay. Yeah. So you can make up to five with that check. All right. And then I want to go downstairs and give three of those to Orizana. Okay. She kind of takes them and just places them on the bedroll that she's sitting on. Do you know how to use those? No. I can show you at least the basics. And then you can use them if somebody ever tries to put you in chains again. Make a persuasion check. Okay. That is a 21. Okay. You spend the next little while after you make these going over some of the basics with her. She's not receptive at first. She just kind of stares there unresponsive. But eventually she starts to kind of watch what you're doing. And then eventually she kind of picks one up and kind of toys with it for a while. And she eventually starts to understand you're trying to teach her something. Um, but as you are spending um, a while actually making the picks and then teaching her, the rest of you, were you doing anything or just kind of resting as the you all travel on? Uh, Amson's just walking around the boat playing his loot. Okay. And uh, after the ordeal and all this meat, there's sort of a lively attitude. Uh, make a performance check. I don't even kind of vaguely remember doing this at one point. That's really terrible. Uh, I'm going to use luck, because why not? <laughs> that's the exact same roll. Uh, that's, a a that's a 13. Okay, not your, not your best, but to them it's more than adequate. And if you and clap along to it, you can tell they don't know the song, but they don't care. They have a good time. And um, Anson, as you're kind of walking around the boat playing this music, make a acrobatics check. Sure. Natural 20. <laughs> Why weren't you here earlier? You suddenly feel a sudden tug on your shoulders as you are pulled backwards um, by a golden elf. You see another one taking a bottle and begin to pour it in your mouth, but you just twist and turn. Out of their uh, grapple, suppose it is. They were trying to uh, slosh you up. Um, a few of the, a little bit of the liquid kind of spills onto the deck as they laugh and then hold the bottle out for you. I'm simply going to say, in a, and I'll do this in Elvish. Under normal circumstances, I will not deny a drink. However, you tried to force it upon me first, and so I'm sorry, but I must uh, deny this one request this time. And suits yourself, and they toss, toss it back a few sips and toss it to the other one. Um, there were three of these uh, elves, two male and one female. They kind of toss the, the ball around again and sit down and listen to you play if you continue to do so. Of course. All right. The rest of you, are you guys doing anything in particular? 
I'm watching the fishing expedition. Okay. I'm watching Amson. Okay. Um, you see all this occur to Amson and Ball, you see you're watching almost as astutely as the female golden elf is, and she's just kind of looking off the side. Every now and then she glances over to you, um, but just kind of watches the line and watching how tall it is. Otherwise, the next couple hours go by, and the sun begins to set. You see where the night before there was some cloud coverage. There's almost almost none tonight. You see the stars are bright, and the moon is beginning to grow into a full moon. You see the constellations and the light of those stars reflecting off of the ocean. The water and the waves as you're cutting through them, heading west to White Guard. Everyone, go ahead and give me a perception check. Twelve. Three. Seven. Lucky seven. Seven. Twenty-one. Okay. Uh, so Thank all you, of you are, have, are eating or and just finishing eating your Saurus steaks, this alligator. Um, somewhat gamey, but um, red meat all the same. And having, perhaps having a few drinks. And Ellery, as you look over... And see the stars kind of hitting the horizon. There is a part of the horizon where the stars don't appear the same light. The rest of them appear that sort of white with hints of blue light. And there's a section of them with maybe three stars just at the edge of the horizon over the ocean where they appear white, but with more of a hint of gold or yellow. One of them blinks begins to get a little brighter. You keep um, watching for a moment or two. Good. Yeah, I was going to say that when I see this, I get up and go over to the side to look out and pay closer attention. Okay. As you go over to the side and begin to look out towards it, you see one of the lights is beginning to get brighter. So I'm going to... Grab the attention of the nearest crew member and point out the lights. I think something or someone is coming. What? He, as you grab the nearest one, he looks half drunk holding a half empty bottle of some sort of sweet smelling rum type liquid. He kind of squints out in the direction you're pointing, but doesn't seem. And he has another sip. Uh, how? Quickly, does this does the light seem to be approaching? Quick, but it looks far off. So if this crew member doesn't seem to see it, then I'm going to look for somebody who's slightly less drunk. Um, looking around, you do see the elf that jumped into the water, the one that seems to be basically the boat guard with mm -hmm. the glaive, is looking out in the direction of the light, gripping his glaive. Yeah, so I go over to him. Do you think that's a ship? No, it is not a ship. Though I do not know what it is, I have not seen this. And he hasn't met your gaze, he's still staring off towards the light. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm watching it too. Okay, and as you turn, uh, standing beside him, looking towards the light, it slowly begins to come closer and closer until you see movement upon the light. On both sides, you see the flapping of wings. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session, and we'll pick up next week. Uh-oh. Welcome Great. to the Sea of Orn. <laughs> You've done good so far. I hope we don't come across anything ornery. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you will know. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, 
feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.